everybody, it's Leanne from Podunk Pretties, and today I want to come in and show you how to make these really easy design boards for your quilt blocks. Um, if you've never seen these before, they're just like your design wall for your quilt, but they're small for your quilt blocks. So you can take them over to your machine, and they're really nice for when you're doing like a quilt sampler, but I use them all the time for every quilt that I make. I'll put a picture up over here somewhere of the quilt that's on my design wall right now and I use these boards for that. But I made this video a year or two ago, posted it on Facebook and never posted it on YouTube. And a friend of mine called this week and asked me if um, I could show her how to make these. And I said, well, as a matter of fact, I can. I have a video. Let me find it. So I found it, did a little bit more editing, made it a little bit better than what it was, and decided I would do this little intro to let you know what was going on. But this is the, the board that I made during this video. Um, and what's really special about these compared to everybody else's that's out there is that mine is made with things that you already have around your house. So it's just going to cost you pennies and going and digging in your stash. So let's get on with the video. Um, but what you're going to need is some cardboard. Um, luckily, I can get my cardboard for free. My husband gets it at his work. And there it is all stacked up. He gets it in various sizes. Some of it's thicker than others. Um, today I'm going to be working with a relatively thin piece, so the cardboard doesn't have to be real thick. Um, as you can see, if I had to guess, I'd say it's about an eighth of an inch thick. Um, I, would, I would think that, you know, you could use um, a paper towel box. I would go to the grocery store and first of all ask them if they have any boxes that paper towels or something that come in. Tell them that you need some big boxes. And I'm sure that they'll be able, be more than happy to give you some boxes. Um, if not, you can always go to a place like um, the UPS store and buy cardboard boxes if that's your last resort. But I do this be, do it this way because this is free to me. So you can make them whatever size that you want. The one we're going to be making today is 16 inches. I've already cut out my square. That's what this ruler was used for, was to measure a 16 inch square. And this is my old rotary cutter. That's what it was used for. Then we need flannel. I bought my flannel at Joann's. It's just plain old white flannel. It was $5.99 a yard. And I had a 60% off coupon, so I bought several yards of it. You never know when you're going to need it. It's also cut at 16 inches. This is a 16-inch square of flannel. The binding for them, um, you could use a jelly roll or you could cut from yardage. You can make this as scrappy as you like or one solid piece like I did. Um... I'm using some scraps from a quilt backing that I had left over, so it's one continuous cut. So you'll want to cut as many pieces as you need to go around your square. If you're doing a 16 inch square, you're going to need for it to be, you're going to need at least two pieces that are two and a half by width of fabric sewn together. Once you get them sewn together, you're going to fold the edges in towards the middle and then fold it in half again. The easiest way to do that is to actually press the seam in the middle first. Press the seam in the middle first, then open it up and bring your edges in toward the middle and press it. If you want to do that all the way down. We're going to need basting spray. Washable Elmer School Glue. Spray this surface. It doesn't take a lot um, to make this stick. And normally you would protect your, your cutting area um, from the spray. But um, I'm just going to do a quick little few spritz. You can see them on there. Just to hold this in place. Yeah, I'm going to have a mess to clean up later. But, you know, that's how it goes. So then you just take your flannel. I think the best way to do it is to fold it in half. Fold your flannel in half. Uh, let's see if I can get a hold of it and lay it up at the top smooth it out and just pull the, the other down the rest of it down and smooth it out 
If it's not perfect, don't worry about it. If it doesn't come all the, all the way to the edge, that is no big deal. No big deal at all. So the next thing we're going to do is to add this binding. Uh, Lord, because we're going to have to iron the, the binding onto this. But first we want to put down some drops of glue on the edge. About... You know, it doesn't take a whole lot. Don't put a bunch of globs on there because this is just, you know, for tacking. Um, you could actually just put a dot like every half inch or so all the way around. Just enough to hold it in place because we're going to iron this and dry that glue real quick. All right. So just like on a quilt, you're going to want to start this in the middle. Whoops, I better tell you. Well, we'll do that next. Um, start it in the middle. I think it just gives it a better finish. And we're trying to line that seam up, that middle fold seam, with the edge of the board. And we'll just... I've got my iron set on um, linen, but I always set my iron on linen no matter what. Very Unless I'm working with fusible applique. I just crank that baby up and let her rip. Oh, we don't want to stick those corners down. You want to leave those free and easy. Do you see I, I just pulled that off? Rub that glue off of there on the next corner. There again. We're going to line that seam up with the edge of the fabric. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, you can be perfect if you want. I don't have a problem with that. All right, and then we're going to give it a little press to, iron, to dry that glue. Okay, before I glue this side down, I just want to press this under. I've got it unfolded. I want to press it under. See that? Just fold it under. Give it a little press. Because we're not going to sew the ends together. Now you can if you want. You can do it just like a quilt and sew those ends together. I'm just not that rambunctious. Well, you want to put a little bit of glue on that fabric, the, your binding fabric, because we didn't put any on that. Just line it up there. See that? And again, hit it with the iron, all except for the corners. All right. Now we're going to do the other side the exact same way. Okay, now miter these corners. The miter in the corners is just real simple. You push that down in there. Let me see if I can zoom this in so you can see it. Move this up. Got this side. We're just going to push it down. Push it in there. And then push that one up. It was just that easy. And you've got a mitered corner. Don't you wish it was that easy on your quilt? 
I guess it would be if we, we attached our binding this way. Give it a little shot of heat. So it'll stay. And you're going to want to do that on all four corners on both sides. Um, I've changed um, my normal quarter inch foot over to a walking foot to help pull this through. I've also changed my needle to a blue jean needle. Yeah, these blue jean needles are kind of old, but you know, how often do I, I need one of these kind of needles? Um, for the thread, I am using um, serger thread just because... Um, it's cheap. You guys know me. I, when I can cheap out, I do. So, let's see if we can get this going. I'm wanting to stitch just right along the very edge here. And I want to pull that bottom thread up. So, I'm taking a few small stitches forward and backwards and just stitch all the way around I'm gonna take my stitch link up length up to 3.0 and I am assisting this a little bit with my hands kind of giving it a little push because um, you know sewing machines aren't made for pushing cardboard through but it is doable To keep my stitches nice and straight, I'm lining up, um, there's a little gap right here on my foot, and I'm lining up that fabric with the right hand side of that gap. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Can you see that there's, there's a gap right here? I'm lining my fabric up with the inside gap. When I get to that corner, I'm just going to take one stitch into the, um, the 45 degree, and then I'm going to turn it. That's what I'm trying to do anyway. <laughs> it doesn't always work out like we planned, does it? But I think it did. Yeah, it's lighted up really good. Okay, I'm back at the corner. One stitch in the corner and pivot. All right. All right, slow down. Now here's where the, the, the two fabrics joined. I'm gonna slow down a little bit just because it's a little bit heavier there. I'm taking a real big risk by driving fast. But you know, you gotta live dangerously. Get a little wild and crazy a little while. <laughs> Well, for some reason, my camera shut off um, before I got to finish this up, but um, I guess that'll work out for the better. There we go. There's the stitches on the front and on the corner. And let's flip it over. It did pretty good about catching it. Um, got a little, a little crazy here, but all in all, it turned out all right. I think it'll hold up for to put fabric on. But anyway, that's that's it, guys. Okay, now that we've got our board made, I wanted to show you how I use them. Of course, you know I bring them over here by my sewing machine. We'll sew up my blocks, and once that block is all together, the block gets taken off the board, put on the wall, and um, my design boards can be put over here on the table right beside me just stack nice and neat right back where they were and then they're ready to use the next time because right behind my boards is my cutting table my cutting mat so I can just pull the boards off as I get blocks cut 
and get them stacked and bring them back over here where we can start the process all over again. If this is your first time um, watching a video of mine on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe. It's just a little thing that you can do that helps me a lot. Thanks again, guys. Thanks for stopping by my little spot in Podunk.